All right, just about two years ago, former Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi, and then he was Justice Gogoi, had headed the Constitution bench which delivered the judgment in the Roger Matthew case in November 2019. Justice Gogoi observed in the judgment that the discretion accorded to the central or state government to reappoint members after retirement discourages public faith in justice dispensation system, which is like loss of one of the key limbs of the sovereign. Gogoi at that time had further added in his observation, it increases interference by the executive, jeopardizing the independence of judiciary. In the concurring judgment, one of the bench members who Justice Gogoi was heading, Justice Deepak Gupta, added, one cannot expect justice from those who, on the verge of retirement, throng the corridors of power looking for post retiral sinecures. Now, nobody is implying that Justice Gogoi was doing so. But it's a little ironic that uh, this observation was made by a bench headed by Justice Ranjan Gogoi, just, mind you, November 2019, just about a few months ago. And the irony lies that today, less than four months after his retirement, Ranjan Gogoi, former Chief Justice of India, has been appointed to the Rajya Sabha. The former CGI of India, Nomination has clearly drawn some very sharp reactions from the opposition. AIMIM leader Saudin Oasi questioned if the nomination was quid pro quo. The Congress pretty much said exactly that. The Ahmadmi Party also said that the President's decision was questionable by appointing Ranjan Gogoi to the Rajya Sabha, nominating him to the Rajya Sabha, saying the move will cause an irreparable damage to the independence of judici judiciary. Former Chief Justice of India K.G. Balakrishnan also reacted, saying that there is always a quota for a jurist to be nominated to the Rajya Sabha. On the other hand, as CGI, Ranjan Gogoi presided over many crucial judgments, benches that delivered several landmark judgments, which include the Ayodhya land dispute, decriminalizing of homosexuality, or even the Rafal deal verdict. Because now each judge, in the context of what he has done, is suspect, which is most unfortunate, because many of them are you know, of, of unquestionable integrity. So he has damaged himself, he has damaged the institution, and the government doesn't care. That's the long and short of it. Justice Ranganath Mishra ki baat kar rahe hain, unke retirement ke saath saal ke baad. एक कांग्रेस पार्टी ने उनको अपने पार्टी में उनको शामिल किया और उनको दिया अरे गोगोई साहब भी ज्वाइन कर लीजिए ना बीजेपी कौन रोक रहा है आपको मगर मेरा मानना यह है कि जजेस जो है रिटायर होते हैं उनको इस तरह के नॉमिनेशन से दूर रहना जरूरी है ये पॉलिटिकल नॉमिनेशंस हैं राज्यसभा का पॉलिटिकल नॉमिनेशन है जस एक रिटायर हुए सीजे साहब उनको गवर्नर आप बना दिए तो ये ये भाई आप मैसेज क्या दे रहे हैं जनता को ये सरकार को भी तो सोचना चाहिए मुझे लगता है कि भाई उनका जो अनुभव है अनुभव ध्यान में रखते हुए वो बहुत बड़े जज जज भी रहे हैं और जो लॉ का स्टडी उनका बहुत अच्छा रहा है और इसलिए मुझे लगता है कि रंजन गोगोई की जो अपॉइंटमेंट है ये बहुत ही अच्छी बात है और मुझे लगता है कि इसमें कांग्रेस पार्टी ने टिप्पणी करने की कोई आवश्यकता तो नहीं है एक व्यक्ति जिसने राफेल जैसे मामले में फैसला दिया हो और जिनके फैसले पर उस समय भी बहुत सारे सवाल उठे थे अब उसी व्यक्ति को जब आप राज्यसभा में लेके आते हैं उसको बैकडोर एंट्री देते हैं पार्लियामेंट के अंदर तो कहीं ना कहीं ये एक बड़ा सवाल या निशान है हमारी जुडिशरी के ऊपर We're speaking to senior advocate and SCBA president, Mr. Dushan Dave. Sir, a lot of controversy has broken out about Justice Gogoi's nomination to the Rajya Sabha. What is your take on this entire political controversy as well as the fact that normally a senior jurist is nominated to the Rajya Sabha? I, I have no doubt that a senior jurist can be nominated, but there is no doubt in my mind that the nomination of Chief Justice Gogoi is perhaps the worst blow to the judiciary in recent times. I mean, we don't have to look at what has happened in the past. The fact of the matter is that the government has really uh, taken advantage uh, of rewarding uh, Justice Gogoi 
in nominating him because he definitely presided over number of uh, cases which have all gone in favor of the government in last two years that he was uh, in the Supreme Court. Not only for the independence of judiciary, but considering that Justice Gogo is not a man who is worthy to be nominated by the President to Rajya Sabha, I think he sh his nomination really is a very sad uh, affair. When it comes to this entire issue, one aspect is what you've said about uh, Justice Gogoi himself. The other aspect that's being raised is the independence of judiciary and post-retirement uh, pos positions being offered to judges and how they impact the image of the judiciary. As a senior advocate, how do you see this aspect? Well, you know, there is no doubt that our constitution is founded on the principle of separation of power and the judiciary is expected uh, to be completely independent of the executive. Uh, during the constituent assembly debates, suggestions were made by very distinguished members who said that uh, there must be a provision in the constitution that judges should not be uh, given and uh, take any position post-retirement. That uh, you know, suggestion was rejected by Dr. Ambedkar because he perhaps expected that the executive will never try and trifle with the judiciary. I, how wrong Dr. Ambedkar, a great man was, that time now tells us. All right, so, you know, we want to lay it right there. It's not something which is unprecedented that a former Chief Justice of India has been appointed to the Rajya Sabha uh, about it uh, as we go on into the point. But what's raised eyebrows clearly is the very short cooling off period in this time, which is less than four months. Uh, is it morally right uh, or are post-retirement benefits uh, or seen as a post-retirement benefit to the Chief Justice of India? I have with me this evening Hitesh Jain. Bharati Janta Party spokesperson, senior advocate Prajesh Kalappa and also Congress leader. I also have Justice A.K. Ganguly, former Supreme Court judge. I want to begin with uh, you, Justice Ganguly. Appreciate you joining us. Um, you know, it's not the first time. It's known to have happened before. Uh, it's happened twice, if I'm not wrong, before. But I want to ask you, Justice Ganguly, what do you make of this as a former Supreme Court judge for a post-retirement posting such as the Rajya Sabha in less than four months of time of retirement for the Chief Justice of India, would you see it appropriate? Well, in the past, judges of Supreme Court, even the Chief Justice of India, has made their way to this Rajya Sabha. But this is, I think, for the first time that there is a presidential nomination in favor of a retired Chief Justice within four months of his retirement uh, under uh, Article 80, Sub-Article 1, Clause A, Sub-Clause 3. I think here the President has the power to nominate. The Honorable Justice Gogoi is not facing any election as was done by the previous judges or Chief Justices. So this is a very unique uh, instance and one must consider the, the, the offices which are involved, the office of the Honorable President and the office of the Honorable Chief Justice, the two highest offices, the highest executive office is that of the President, the highest judicial office is that of the Chief Justice. So here, people's expectation is that these are offices of great honor and rectitude. So therefore, in such cases, the offices of, of this character will not be involved in anything which brings about dishonor to these officers. So we, we expect a lot of, uh, a lot of, lot of uh, standard setting example from these officers. Now the, here the appointment has come in favor of the Honorable Justice, the Chief, retired Chief Justice Gogoi. Can you consider his track record? He has been involved, he was the, leading the bench in at least three or four of the cases, one is that NRC case in Assam, the other is the Ayodhya dispute, and the third is the Rafael case. In all these cases, the government, which is at the center, is keenly interested in the outcome, and the outcome has been to their liking. These judgments are controversial judgments. And these, these appointment comes within four months of the retirement of the Honorable Chief Justice. So these are questions which will create legitimate doubts, bona fide doubts in the mind of ordinary men. They will start looking at these offices with some amount of suspicion. This is a great damage to our democratic institution. 
I look at it from that point of view. I look at it as a, as a, as a common citizen. I have no grudge against the honourable judge. I do not know him personally that much, but I wish him well. I have nothing against him. But look at the office which he held, the office of the Chief Justice of India. And this is for the first time, I think, in the history of our constitutional democracy, that the President chose a former Chief Justice of India for the purpose of his nomination under Article 80. This is a matter of great, if I may say so, great moment. Would the you call it? Honorable, the president right. must be guided purely, purely by questions of propriety and question of honor, question of objectivity. He must not act in a fashion which has even the appearance of being what they say, mm -hmm. something which is, which is not proper and not, uh, uh, not appropriate. Um, they must be above all this, but the, the, but the, the way this has been done, I am shocked. I am individually as a human being, I am shocked. Justice Ganguly, I want to ask you I mean, a question. What is your question? How do you look at it? No, okay. many, people have, many, people have, many people have questioned it. Right. No, you know, Justice Ganguly, many I want to ask you a question. Before I go to our other guests. The manner in which it has been yes. done. So because it's been questioned, because yes. and you also, I think, elucidated no, very no, may briefly I, may here. I, may I, may I, yes, sir, finish. No, no, I tell you, when, when the president chose Sochin Tendulkar as a person in the sports quota for the purpose of his nomination, no question can be raised because such an eminent person. Now, can we call Honorable Justice Gogoi as an eminent jurist going by the standards of Indian judiciary? I mean, I have serious questions about it. I think Mr. Nariman was uh, was given a nomination under this quota. Mr. Fali Nariman, who is internationally famous. Mm -hmm. Can you compare our great uh, Mr. Nariman with uh, Mr. Ranjan mm -hmm. Gogoi? I have my doubts. Okay. Uh, you know, sir, before I go across to our uh, I other guests, doubts. I understand, sir. I want to ask you one so brief question. the presidential question. nomination must be above all suspicion. Yes. Yes. Okay. I want to ask you one question. Is it yes, your is apprehensions, question? Justice Ganguly, pertain yes. only to possibly Justice Gogoi? Or is it to do with any retirement post of any Supreme Court judge? No, retirement, all retirement posts, because there are many, many tribunals. Mm -hmm. There are many institutions which requires the appointment of a retired Supreme Court judge. Say, for instance, the, the National Human Rights Commission. Right. Similar, the, the, the TD, TDSAT or other, other organization where the former Supreme Court judge's appointment is required. But this is something else. Right. This is a nomination by the president. And you think, in your, in, view, much higher footing. in your view, this shakes the and faith the of the people the former Chief Justice in judiciary? Is, yes, it does. Yeah. In, 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 the, in the functioning of the president also. You'd even the question the functioning of the honorable president. Post. Right. Justice Ganguly, I urge you to yes, stay with the, me. This is ultimately the nomination by the president yes. and then... I urge you to stay with me. I want to bring in yes. our other guests as well, uh, if you'd allow me that. And I want to begin with our BJP spokesperson. Yes. We have Hitesh Jain who's joining us. Hitesh Jain, you know, before I ask you the question, I just want to quote you of what uh, one of your, uh, I would reckon you'd call him one of your tallest leaders, Arun Jaitley said. Judges' verdicts are influenced by post-retirement jobs. In that purview, would you like to put the latest appointment in perspective, Mr. Jen? Two issues. Before that, uh, as Justice Ganguly rightly stated, that this is the first time a retired Chief Justice has been nominated and not been elected for the post of Rajya Sabha. In the past, political parties fielded the retired chief justice and they were elected as the member of Rajya Sabha. That is point number one. So this is a case of nomination and not by setting up as a candidate by a political party and then putting up for election because that can be clearly shows where your alignment can lie. 
Second, if you will look at the language of wording of Article 80, it clearly says that the president has to consider exceptional knowledge, mm -hmm. experience, and he should be an eminent personality. Now, if you apply these three criteria, and then you, if, you, if one looks at the three criteria and they say that a person who has served the judiciary for over two decades, right. including holding the post of the Chief Justice of India, and he, if he cannot be the eminent personality, he cannot mm -hmm. be experienced, he cannot be a person with the exceptional knowledge, then who should president consider to appoint when he has to nominate, then who will be such person? Because as far as eminent personality is concerned, if the Chief Justice of India cannot be the eminent personality, mm -hmm. then I mean who should be the eminent personality? That is the second point. The third point, under the constitution, if you look at from the doctrine, I heard Mr. Dabey, he was speaking about the separation of powers. Now, in separation of powers, neither there is a bar. If there would have been a bar, the constitution would have specifically provided that eminent personality, anyone other than a member of the judiciary. Even if you will look at the election of the Rajya Sabha or the Lok Sabha, the there are so many precedents about judges retiring and immediately on retirement, they are contested the election. So you had the Chief Justice of one of the High Court who was the member of Parliament. You, uh, I mean, Justice Chagla is concerned. In 1958, he retired as the Chief Justice of High Court. Immediately, he was appointed okay. as the High Commissioner. And then immediately, he was the Minister for five years for okay. education and for external affairs. Now, on the larger issue, since you asked me the question, I'm glad you asked and you referred to our eminent party leaders. But I guess there has to be a consensus that has to be fielded. You rightly asked the one question to Justice Ganguly that after retirement, you are appointed on the tribunal. You accept the appointment as an arbitrator. You accept the board position on the private company against whom the Supreme Courts have also considered the matters. You have accepted as an arbitrator, you draw the fees from the public sector under undertaking. So I agree this is a larger issue. We must build a political consensus and we should decide where should we draw the line. Okay. I mean, this is the issue since it has been opened for a debate. One should certainly debate such okay. issues. Now, Mr. Jain, before I go to Mr. Karappa, I want to just ask you a counter question on the point one that you raised of who is more eminent than possibly the Chief Justice of India. Uh, at that point, uh, Justice Ganguly had given an example of for the same post, there was a nomination of Mr. Fali Nariman, uh, somebody like that. And, you know, nobody's, and especially me, I'm extremely small to actually question and uh, draw a comparison between uh, Mr. Fali Nariman and Mr. Gogoi. But I just want to ask you, the Chief Justice of India, Ranjan Gogoi, was actually even uh, charged for sexual harassment, given a clean shirt, yes. But for somebody who's even had the taint of sexual harassment on him, is appropriate, is eminent enough to be nominated to the highest chair of Rajya Sabha? I just want to ask you that, Mr. Jain. No, no, certainly Two there is questions. no question in regard to you the Mr. Karappa, Karappa, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming. Give me a minute. Mr. Mr. Karappa, I'm coming right back to you. Let, let Mr. Jain answer this question. So, yes, Mr. Jain, you, please you finish. Have, you, you, you'll have to remember, you'll have to remember, Preeti. Well, you'll have to remember, Preeti, that... Well, as you rightly I'm said, you, Mr. Karapa, Mr. I'm Gogai has been given a clean sheet and there has been not a single, there is not... Please finish, Mr. Jain. Am, am I going to speak, Preeti, or... Well, there was I'm coming to you, sir. I'll name. give you enough time, that I promise. Was, there was, there, see, I was only saying... I'll come to you. Let the him, question is question to me. To Mr. Jain. Yes, Mr. Mr. Karapa, Jain, this question has been asked Quickly make your point. Mr. Jain, quickly make your point. simple as far as the charges were there they were inquired and there was found that those charges there were no substance okay so once that is the case you cannot hold then it is very easy that if a person is holding the office i should make an allegations and you should hold okay. that allegation for his entire okay, life so an but allegation, but are allegations okay. you do not become an eminent person okay mr now, Jain, spoke also about Sachin somebody Tendulkar. there is an example of an actress rekha who was nominated and she never attended the parliament okay, but for mr. six Jain, years but so we also has have mr. an example but about having said that personalities who have been appointed okay i'm going to come back to you okay mr Jain, this is not done, Preeti. I'm coming Either to that, you. Why do you invite me to your show? Mr. Karappa, you need to have some patience. Well, I'm coming to you. I've been asked to I me. am coming to Mr. you. Mr. Karappa, you started, started and then you Why are you getting that the gentleman had to come in? One second. Mr. Karappa, I am coming to you. That question was for Mr. Jain. And the question I'm asking you is, uh, what are you questioning, sir? Mr. Karappa, are you questioning the fact the appointment of Mr. Ganguly as nominated to the Rajya Sabha chair or are you questioning the 
timing of the cooling off period because it's happened in your government as well where the Congress was in power. No, I see, but you can't you can't compare apples to avocados. I think they are totally different fruit. If you're going to say that you the, the Congress party had done it, Congress party had done it seven years later. And seven years is a reasonable period for anybody to say, look, there is no quid pro quo, right? Here there is this, uh, this kind of an appointment reeks of quid pro quo. And the, the entire reason is that Justice Satashivam becomes a governor barely six months after he's retired. And then there is yet another Chief Justice who becomes a uh, Rajya Sabha MP barely four months after his retirement. So ultimately, you see, the government has a lot to gain from the court. Mm -hmm. And the government is always handing out these carrots. And then there is also the stick which they are employing. Mr. Kalapa, Mr. Jain, can you put the feeder down? Mr. Jain, he did not interrupt you. Do not do that. Put the feeder down, Mr. Jain. Let Mr. Kalapa speak. Continuously, when this is the case, when this is when this is the case, then how do you say how do you say, Preeti, that you know there will be a decision, and then the public at large has to accept that the judiciary is above board? How do you think the public will accept at large that the judiciary is above board, particularly when justice is not only done but also must be seen to be done? How how will the public view this and say that look? Chief Justices of India, you know, well within uh, mm -hmm. the period after their retirement, just uh, within months, they are appointed to very private Mr. Karapa, is your Then Mi how does the public lap up and say that, look, this is an acceptable judgment? Okay. Mr. Karapa, are you also, is the Congress also making this point of quid pro quo? Because like even what Justice Ganguly mentioned, that over a period of time, under his tenure, very key decisions regarding the government's interest, which the government was deeply interested in, was possibly taken under the leadership of his bench or under him as Chief Justice of India, be it Ayodhya, be it Rafal? See, as far as quid pro quo is concerned, the Congress party is not going to comment on it. But the matter is out in the public. Like I said, ultimately, the, the, the judiciary stands on an elevated plane. Why? Because the entire country respects them. But just look at what social media is today speaking. Every, you know, the, the Twitter has gone a uh, berserk, the uh, uh, Facebook has gone berserk, and every single message is regarding the kind of message, the kind of judgments that Justice Gogoi has passed. And everybody is today questioning this. Ultimately, who is the loser? The judiciary is the loser. Ultimately, as a result of this entire controversy, the mm -hmm. judiciary's, uh, you know, status in the public eye comes lower. And that is the interest of the government. Because the government doesn't want the judiciary to have an exalted position. And that's the reason continuously, okay. appointment after appointment, appointment after appointment, the government is continuously appointing judges who have been in plum positions. All right. I just want to take one final word from the Justice A.K. Ganguly, former Chief Justice of India. And then I'd like to end the show on that. And uh, Justice Ganguly, I'd like to ask you, a move like this, less than four months, Chief Justice uh, Ranjan Gogoi, former Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi, nominated to Rajya Sabha. Will this shake the faith of the people in the highest, uh, I would reckon, uh, you know, the post where judiciary is concerned? Well, I am reminded of what Mr. Orun Jaitley said. He was always talking of a cooling off period. If is four months a cooling off period? And my next question is, that the gentleman who spoke after me said that if Chief Justice is not an eminent jurist, mm -hmm. well, there are judges and Chief Justices. Everybody does not become eminent jurist. And the learned uh, the gentleman has compared Chief Justice Gogoi with Justice Chagla. Okay. Chief Justice Chagla. With authority and, uh, and with right. some confidence in me, I say I have some experience of the judiciary. Justice Gogoi, with great respect to him, is not a patch on Justice Chagla. Okay, sir, I need Justice to close Chagla's the show. Justice Chagla's quality of his judgment, right. his rectitude, his uprightness, he's one of the... Okay. Uh, if, if you ask me to name five best judges in the history of Indian right. judiciary, Chagla figures in one of them. All right, sir, I appreciate you all for joining he, us, gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Justice Ganguly. Sparing the time. Thank you, Utesh Jain and uh, Brijesh Karapa. Hi, everyone. Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, 
like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.